Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Biggest Winner Challenge. What is the Biggest Winner Challenge, you may ask? It is a program that focuses on lifestyle changes that lead to weight loss and ultimately better health and wellness. Now, what do we mean by health? Well, according to the World Health Organization, they define health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not just merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Well, since then, we've expanded the definition to include two more dimensions of health, including spiritual well-being as well as emotional well-being. You know, it's been since 2001 that the Health Institute for Preventive Care, also known as Hip Care, was established in response to extensive research carried out at Emory University. It is out of this research we came up with a holistic approach to help better the lives of others through the Designer Lifestyle Program. Hip Care, in partnership with True Health TV, are pleased to present to you the Biggest Winner Challenge. You have the opportunity through this program to lose and keep weight off, prevent and reverse both diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and achieve overall better health through lifestyle changes. For the next hour, you will learn about lifestyle changes, healthy food preparation, movement and exercise, as well as helpful everyday tips, spiritual guidance, and medical facts that will all help you to achieve your health goals. As a participant in the Biggest Winner Challenge, you have the opportunity to send in your video diaries or vlogs as you take this journey. Share your challenges and your triumphs with us as you go through this 10-week program. Your video diaries will be put on our website and possibly broadcast on the air the following week. We will also ask you to share this with your friends and loved ones and allow them to vote for your video diaries. Up next is the Designer Lifestyle Learning Session where we will cover one of the 10 health laws that will help transform you into a healthier you. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Designer Lifestyle Biggest Winner Challenge. We are happy for you to join us. My name is Dr. Debbie Wallace, and I'm the director of the Health Institute. And we want you to learn how to live a healthy lifestyle, the lifestyle that God wants you to live, so that you can be in good health and prosper. You know, we know that there are instructions in anything in life, any automobile or any machine that we purchase, they're, they come with instruction manuals. Sometimes we don't like to read those manuals, but they nevertheless have instructions. There are rules to follow to get the best out of those machines. Well, your body is like a machine, and there are some instructions that have been laid out for us by the one who designed us, God. And so to achieve our best, our healthiest lifestyle, it's best that we study what those rules are, and we have named those the 10 health laws. The health laws tell us what are the things that our body absolutely needs in order for us to function at our very best. So we want you to live a healthy lifestyle, learning and understanding each of these health laws. So today, we'll be talking about the first health law. The first health law, following the acronym health laws, H for honesty. We need to be honest in everything that we do in order to achieve the best health. You know, just like an alcoholic, you know, before they go uh, through a program, they have to start by saying, hey, I am, my name is so-and-so, and, -so and I'm an alcoholic. Because if you're not able to accept that that is where you're at, it's hard to change that. You first have to accept and own it, that I have a problem with this. So then you can overcome that problem. And so... Honesty is very important. And in the Bible, we read in John 8, 32, that it says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If we're truthful, if we tell ourselves those things that we know to be truth, we are going to be free than if we you know, try to convince ourselves otherwise. You have a problem. We need to be able to own it. And there are times when we don't do our very best. We need to say, okay, I didn't do my best, but next time 
I'll try harder. So the first health law is that of being honest. Now it may sound like it's easy to do, but you know, it's not as easy sometimes to be honest with ourselves and to say, you know, I do have a problem. And so I want you to first examine what are some of the things that you're struggling with? What do you need to get the victory over? In what ways can you improve your lifestyle? And to own those things and to say, I am going to try my best to do better. Now, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, that we are bought for a price. So we should honor God in our bodies. And the way we treat our bodies is important. If we do not do those things that are going to bring health, then they will do the opposite. will bring disease on us because those laws follow naturally. If we don't take care of ourselves, we'll find that things happen. Our body becomes out of sync. And diseases such as diabetes and heart disease will sometimes develop because we are not doing the things that we need to do to keep it healthy, to prevent those things from happening. So I want you to remember first health law, H for honesty. And we wanted this time for you to think about what are some of the things that you need to improve on? What are some ways in which you can uh, improve your lifestyle? And to start making a concerted effort to improve on those things. God wants us to be free. The most important thing in life is actually freedom. We fight wars for freedom. But you cannot be free if you do not tell the truth about what's really going on. It's really important that you own that. So I thank you for joining us today for our first uh, health law on honesty. I want you to make an assignment now of actually thinking about those things that you need to improve on and start uh, contemplating how we're going to make those changes as we go through the program. The next time we're going to be talking about eating, the nutrition, and how we will do that. And we hope you'll join us then. I look forward to seeing you the next time on our Design a Lifestyle Biggest Winners Challenge. Thank you, and you have a great day. Hello, welcome to True Health TV. I'm your trainer, Marcus, and today we're going to be demonstra demonstrating squats and the benefits of squats. The first thing you want to know about squats is that you don't want to overextend your knees past your toes. So as you get ready to do squats, most people will tend to do squats like this and extend out. That's not a squat. You're actually damaging your knees when you do squats like that. But if you get your feet shoulder width apart, even with the um, outside of your shoulders, even with the outside of your, your feet, and when you squat down, the first thing you do, you want to toot your butt back and then go down. And that will keep your knees right where they were when, you, when you're standing. So the benefits of squats is that you can work your lower, your lower abs and your, um, your quadriceps and your glutes. So a lot of people want to lose their stomach and a lot of females want to um, tone up their um, butts. And men like to have the bigger thighs and um, the teardrops in their thighs. So squats will benefit you if you do them properly and, and if you do them correctly. So the correct way to do the squats, shoulder width apart, head up, looking towards the ceiling, keep your back straight. Don't bend at the um, hips, only bend at the knees. And when you go down, toot your butt back and squat. Come up, just like this. And that's how you do squats, and those are the benefits of squats. So, and, and like I said, it works your lower abs, your quads, and your glutes. When you're doing your squats, you should do it at least three times a week. Uh, in the beginning, as you get used to it, you can increase it to four to five times a week. You want to start off with three sets of ten, then increase it by the increments of five each week. And as you get in better condition, you can go up to about three sets of 50 or four sets of 25 or something like that. And the squats will be benefit, will benefit a lot when it comes to weight loss and muscle toning. And if you're going heavy and you start lifting weights, you don't want to go, you don't want to increase over 12 during heavy squats because you don't want to injure your lower back. Thank you for tuning in to True Health TV. I'm your trainer, Marcus. See you next time. We agree that honesty is the best policy. It applies to all areas of life. And before we can take a step towards change, we must first be honest with ourselves about our situation. We need to live healthier lives, and that is the honest truth. One way to live a healthier life is to be more conscious 
of what we are putting into our bodies. Coming up, we will enter into Cindy's Kitchen. So grab your appetite and let's see how eating healthy can still taste good. So let's say this happens right here. You're sitting at home and you get hungry. That happens to everyone all the time. You get a grumbling in your stomach, right? That's okay. You're sitting at home and you're hungry. What are you going to do? You're going to go to your cabinet, right? So you go to the cabinet and you open the door and it's like... I guess your cabinet's a gateway to a dungeon. Anyway, so you look in your cabinet and what's in there? Nothing. And you're hungry and you want to have food, but you got to go and get food. So you get in your car and you go to the store. Everything's working out fine so far. Here's the problem. You get to the store, you get your cart, you're going down the aisle, and you're seeing all the foods, and because you're hungry, you want to get all the foods. Shopping while you're hungry is like shopping with a bear who is also hungry. I'm gonna eat everything! I'm gonna eat everything! I don't actually think that's how a bear would sound if it could talk. But the point is, you get all the foods, and you don't need to get all the foods. You need to get a certain amount of food, but because you're hungry, your mind isn't really focused, you're not clear, it's not like you're walking in fields, and you're thinking clear thoughts, and you're just having all of... No, you're like, just, I want to eat all the things. And so you end up spending more money than you needed to, and you may have gotten some foods that are not actually healthy for you because some foods, you see them, and they're bright colors, and you see them and you're like, oh, this will take care of my problem right now. Yeah, but it's not really good for you. But you got it anyway because you're hungry. So, the tip for today is don't shop when you're hungry. These a lot of words to get to that point. Hi, I'm Cindy Kaiser, and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to prepare for you a Thai curry soup. And for those of you who have signed up for the Biggest Winner Challenge, you're going to really like the soup because there's only 260 calories per bowl. And most of the calories will come from the coconut milk, but that's what gives it its great flavor. So you can use any kind of vegetables that you like, but today I'm going to use cabbage, potato, peppers, cauliflower, onion, and a little bit of cilantro and green beans. So I think you'll enjoy it. For the cauliflower, I don't like to cut my cauliflower just because when you cut it, it tends to crumble. So I like to just pull it apart, and that way you have nice big um, chunks of it, but it's not crumbling if you use the, the knife on the cauliflower. Now, if you like big chunks, by all means, you know, make them as big as you like for your soup. This really will be more like a stew with the big chunks. I like it chunky so that I'm getting, um, you know, lots of vegetables in my soup. Now, we know we need 10 um, servings of fruits and vegetables every day, this soup will give you a huge portion of those servings that you need. I'm going, I leave the skin on the potato. When I cut it, I, I scrub it good with soap to get all the dirt and, and pesticides if, if you don't buy organic off of there. And then I just make my, my chunks big on my, on my potato. And if you're like me, you like big chunks, then make them big and it goes quicker. But if you like the smaller chunks, by all means, just cut it however your family will like it. I like big chunks of onion as well. So I'm going to chop up my onion to have bigger chunks of it in my soup. Again, I do it long ways, holding the onion together so that it'll be easier to cut so you don't cut your hand. And then long ways while it's laying down and then turning it and doing long ways again and big, big chunks of it. All right. And then the big chunks of green or red pepper. You want a lot of color when you're choosing your vegetables that you want to prepare. You want color for your dishes that's prettier. You want your food to be attractive. You want it to be appealing, not only tasting good, but looking good. So seed your um, pepper and then get big chunks. You will find that not everyone is a fan of pepper, so if you don't like it, you can omit this vegetable from your soup. I 
I'm going to go ahead and start putting these in the pan to give myself some space on and start not my cilantro quite yet. The cilantro we're going to use for the end for garnish. I'm going to start my pan up and put a little bit of oil just to stir fry the vegetables a bit before they go in. the coconut milk goes in. And I'm just going to throw in all my vegetables. The more color that you also have in your dishes that you make, the more phytochemicals and nutrients you're going to receive as well. I understand that the more color you have, the color is what protects the vegetable and the fruit from the sun, but the more you eat of different colors, the more your skin will be protected when you're out in the sun as well. It gives you a natural protectant from the sun. So we want to just stir fry your vegetables a little bit in the oil. I'm going to cut up about a half of a head of cabbage. Cabbage is one of those vegetables that will just shrink like when you cook it like you do with spinach and kale. It will shrink in your soup. So it may look like a lot of vegetables in here, but it will shrink down. And then last, I'm going to cut up some green beans. And throw those in there too with them. Again, I'm just going to cut them in half because I like chunky soup. Maybe thirds because I'm realizing that may not fit on your spoon. I've got all of the beans in the soup. We're going to just stir fry that and I'm going to press one loaf, uh, one um, clove of garlic over the top of it and I don't take the skin off my garlic. I put it right in the press, squeeze that comes right through the skin. It's an easy cleanup because when you pull out the garlic skin, all of it comes out and you're not fighting to get the rest of the garlic out of your press. So it's a quick easy way and then your fingers don't get all stinky with garlic. So I'm going to let this stir fry just a little bit. So stir fry your vegetables for a few minutes in the oil and then you want to add your coconut milk. Two cans of coconut milk. Coconut milk, you see the cream on the top. Once you get that cream off the top, then it'll all the water will come out at the end. Two cans. Coconut milk, people are finding that coconut milk is helping in many tremendous health ways. I saw a video once of a man who, was, who had um, severe Parkinson's disease and he was taking a, a little portion of melted coconut in his a day in a cup and it was seriously helping um, his Parkinson's shaking and, and his ability to um, um, think and also with Alzheimer's they're finding that it's also very helpful. There's a lot of health benefits for the brain with coconut. So I poured in there two cans of the milk and then you want two cups of water and this is what's going to cu cook your vegetables. Just pour it right in there and make a nice chunky soup. Now while these are cooking, I'm going to put in my seasonings now. And it calls for two tablespoons of curry powder, two tablespoons of a chicken style seasoning, and half a teaspoon of salt, and two tablespoons of maple syrup. And that will give it its good curry flavor. I want two tablespoons of curry powder. I'm 
One more. You may not want to measure it over your dish in case it comes out and you have way too much <laughs> curry on your, because curry can be pretty spicy. And you want to blend in two tablespoons as well of the chicken seasoning. So we want two tablespoons of honey. Okay, and we need a half a teaspoon of salt. Now I use um, sea salt, generally speaking, but uh, because salt is salt, but sea salt has a little bit more minerals and more nutrition, but if you are if you need a low sodium diet, you can cut that out or even cut the, the amount. Put a fourth of a teaspoon of salt in your soup, but really a half a teaspoon of salt for this big pot is really low sodium. More and more people are finding that if you get a salt without iodine, we're using the sea salt without iodine and we're finding that goiters are forming again. So that's something to consider too, is that we do need to make sure that we're getting proper amount of iodine daily. Okay, now I'm going to let the soup boil and cook the vegetables and I'll show you um, the finished product shortly. And here is our finished product, Thai curry soup. I'm going to serve it up with some crackers or possibly you could even put a uh, rice in the bottom of your bowl. That would make it nice too as well. And I just garnished it with a little bit of cilantro and I really think your family will enjoy it. We'd love to hear how you like it. Let us know at True Health TV. And thank you for joining us today. Are you as excited as I am to try out Cindy's recipe? You know, you could almost smell and taste how great it is. Now send us a video of yourself preparing the recipe and we can share it on our website. We want to hear your stories and how making these lifestyle changes have impacted your life. Now take a look at Tamika McGee's story and hear how her life has changed through making certain lifestyle choices. Hi, I'm Tamika McGee with True Health TV, the biggest winner challenge. Today we're here to help you lose weight the way I lost weight and that is by using the Word of God. I come to you um, as a person who used to be obese. When I started out as a, a young child, I was the average size, no health issues whatsoever. And as I grew older, I grew to love food. Food became my source of, of comfort, how I covered my pain. Until one day, I looked in the mirror and didn't know who I was. I wasn't big bonded, I, I didn't have thyroid problems. My problem was what I call elbow and uh, hand disease. Every time my elbow bend, my hand would go into my mouth. And so I basically ate my way to comfort myself. But in December 2006, I remember sitting in the truck counting up some change so I can go get some cake. And when I looked in the rearview mirror, I literally did not recognize my face. And at that very moment was when I decided I was going to lose the weight. So the first thing I decided to do was change my thinking. And I said, well, if I change my thinking, then everything else will follow. Did I really believe that? Sort of. I decided to go to the gym. When I got to the gym, um, and it was on a military installation, I was there by myself. And so it started out that the first five or 10 minutes were pretty good, but then the guys started walking in. I was like, you know what? My 15 minutes are up and I left. I was more embarrassed than I was tired at the time because I was ashamed of what I had allowed myself to become. Um, and then when I realized, oh my God, I can't do this, then the 15 minutes began to make sense. Um, one of the things that I did was I stayed away from any person or any situation that made me feel bad or uh, brought negative feelings about myself. The other things that I did is I watched what I thought. So instead of saying, I don't want to be fat, or I, I hope I lose this weight, I stayed away from any words that made me think about being fat. So instead of saying, I don't want to be fat, I said, I'm slim, I'm healthy, I'm beautiful, I'm sexy, I'm whatever it was, because I knew the power of the words of I am, whatever I said behind it was going to come looking for me. And it was at that moment I began to see a shift. Um, the turning point for me to really go full force was when I had gone to church 
And I remember I was on a church call, and everyone was on a church call doing the testimony. Praise the Lord for my rent. Thank you, Jesus. You know, everybody was believing God for all these supernatural things. You're about to be a victim. You're trusting God's going to do it. When it came to be my turn, you know, I said, hey, you know what? I want to lose 100 pounds. And the entire call got silent. And it was like, ah, sister, yeah, yeah, sister, we would love to do that. We'd love to see God do that. And I became angry and offended because I said, well, if, you, if we can trust God for our rent, surely I can trust him for this 100 pounds. So at that very moment, I decided to forget the, tw the 15 minutes. I'm going to go to the gym and do whatever it takes. I'm going to stick to this, you know, my plan of eating. I decided, what are the scriptures that I stand on when I need my rent paid, when the baby's sick, the baby needs shoes, when I need money? I decided to use those same scriptures for my health changes. My first and favorite scripture is Mark 11, 22, and that is have faith in God. And I said, well, God, I trust you for all these things, but I, I don't trust you for the health and weight thing as if, I'm, as if I'm saying, God, you're not here. You're not in my refrigerator. You don't understand this. This coffee is awesome. But I said, I'm going to have faith in you because you told me to. The second scripture that I, that I stood upon was Proverbs 18:21. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and he who loves it reaps the fruit thereof. Again, I began to think, you know what? You have saved me from eviction. You have saved me from the repossession. You have provided me with money. Surely I'm going to, this weight is gone. I'm going to meet my goals. The third scripture that I stood on was Ephesians 3:20. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power of faith that works within us. So if you say have faith in me, and my faith was, even if it was as small as the size of a mustard seed, I can move a mountain, and my faith was bigger than that, surely I'm going to get this weight off. And then I just happened to be flipping again, and I came across the last and final scripture that I stood on, which was John 14, 14. If you ask in my name, I will do it. He didn't say, I'll think about it. He didn't say, well, I might. He didn't say, well, you know, I was just talking about the rent and bills. He said, if you ask in my name, I will do it. And I stood on those scriptures. I've done a lot of things. I've taken, uh, anti, what do you call it, diet suppressant pills. I've taken, uh, what else? I've done detoxes. I've done HCG, the shots. I've done some of everything. But the only thing that's ever worked and that's truly killed me is God's word. Hello. I'm Dr. Tracy Wallace, and this is Medifacts for True Health TV. Today, I would like to speak with you on the subject of bariatric surgery. This is a surgical procedure in which the size of the stomach is reduced to a fraction of its original size. It can be done through a gastric sleeve, which puts a clamp over part of the stomach, or it could be done in a permanent procedure where most of the stomach is sewn up and only a small portion of the stomach is left. This procedure forces the person to only be able to consume small amounts of food at any one time. It does work, and it has been associated with some long-term dramatic weight loss. The problem is, it is a major surgical procedure, and it does have its risk, including things like infection, clots, ongoing chronic nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and even death in some cases. Whenever a patient comes to me and is considering this type of surgery, I tell them, you must be desperate. You must have tried everything else to lose weight before you would consider something like this. And then I ask them, have you considered a low-fat, vegan, vegetarian diet combined with an exercise routine? Sometimes they look down on me and say, this is not something they want to pursue, but I say, why not do this if you're that desperate before considering something so invasive as surgery? We know that a low-fat, vegan, vegetarian diet is associated with significant and dramatic weight loss. It also can actually reverse heart disease. It's the only diet that has been shown to reverse heart disease. So if you are desperate to lose weight, if you think you have tried everything that's out there, why not try a low-fat, vegan, vegetarian diet? Try it for just a month, and you will see the results. This is Dr. Tracy Wallace. You've been listening to Medifacts on True Health TV. Stay tuned for more Medifacts. You don't take shortcuts or play by your own set of rules, and success doesn't count unless you earn it fair and square. That is a quote from our First Lady, Michelle Obama, who also wants us to live healthier. You know, you can achieve your goals, but you have to do it the right way. 
It may get tough sometimes, but you need to stay motivated. So here to help you stay motivated and inspired is Pastor Steve with a message just for you. Hi, I'm Pastor Steve, and I have a question for you. Does God care if we are happy? Actually, I think there are several ways we can find answers to this question. Many people find their happiness is related to their marriage, children, church, peaceful coexistence with others, being healthy, and having a strong relationship with God. But the interesting thing is that all of these things are gifts from God demonstrating His desire for our happiness. We know God wants us to be healthy, but notice the connection between good health and happiness found in Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. So if God wants me to be healthy and being happy helps me to be healthy, then it follows that God wants me to be happy. But has science found the happiness and health connection? Indeed, a review of more than 160 studies of human and animal subjects has found clear and compelling evidence that all else being equal, happy people tend to live longer and experience better health than their unhappy peers. That's from the Science Daily, April 20th of 2015. In fact, the words that Jesus spoke were designed to bring us joy and happiness, according to John 15:11. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Of course, our joy here on earth is going to be interrupted because of the effects of sin. But God has planned on uninterrupted joy in our heavenly home. Jesus speaks of joy as a reward for service in Matthew 25, 21 where he says, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So indeed, God cares about our happiness. His plans for us are to result in happiness. He wants us to experience the goodness of life even here while on earth. He wants us to have life and to experience it abundantly. John 10.10 10 says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I'm Pastor Steve. Thank you for joining us on our inspirational moment. Join us next time on True Health TV. Amen. God does care. That was indeed a good word for us all. Are you ready to make these lifestyle changes to become a healthier you? Do you believe that you deserve to live a healthier life? If your answer is yes, then welcome to the Biggest Winner Challenge. We invite you to join us again next week as we continue to learn how to make lifestyle changes that will ultimately give you a healthier life. Coming up next, we are proud to introduce Adrenaline, an exciting exercise program infused with the Word of God led by Tracy Mitchell. Stay tuned. <laughs>